Hello everyone, my name is Emily and this is a little bit of a different video. I have spent the last week moving cross country with my dad, three dogs, and my fiance, Mr. Artful. It has been incredibly stressful, so I really haven't had a ton of time to film a video for you guys. Um, I kind of got behind and I didn't really mean to do that, but you know, life happens. So I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm kind of just going off the cuff here. I'm filming on a phone. This will be edited on a phone and that's pretty much it. It's going to be a short, sweet, simple uh, video that I try to pack as much knowledge into as possible. So I'm going to be talking about how to draw and sketch with ballpoint pens. Now for this following rule, I'm going to say it to each his own. Um, I really wouldn't sell originals that are done with only or mostly ballpoint pens for high amounts of money or put them as some kind of staple in your gallery, like gallery that you're going to sell, just because most ballpoint pens are not archival. If you want to do a little piece and sell it to your friends, that's fine, but again, to each his own, uh, it's just a recommendation. So by them being not archival, it means that they will fade with time. The pieces that I make with ballpoint pens are what I would call polished sketches. So they look really nice in your sketchbook. You can turn them in as a, as a part of your resume or as a part of your portfolio to colleges, but I really wouldn't use them in a professional sense. So those are my two cents in terms of ballpoint pen polished sketches. Now I'm going to go over some of my favorite ballpoint pens, which I have right here. The Papermate Inkjoy. It just feels very ergonomical. Um, the actual point of it doesn't get all messy. Let's see here. I'll do a I'll do the ink joy. That does happen with every ballpoint pen ever, just so you guys know. And it's by Papermate. but it's smooth, it, it, it just flows very nicely. And you rarely get those little splotches with it. it. It just feels right. I think it is on the pricier side. I believe it's about $6 uh, USD for two. It may be more than that, I'm not entirely sure. Um, but I definitely always have one in my collection. Again, very ergonomical, feels nice, weighted very well. Um, the Bic. Crystal pens, crystal like the alcohol, they are very inexpensive, um, but they're incredible. You know, you, you can do what you will with them. They do get very dirty on the tip. Fun fact, if you are not getting ink coming out of your ballpoint pen, you can touch it to a wet surface, or in this case, my tongue, to pull the ink out of the well. So this is, I think they spell it, yeah. Crystal. Very smooth, but you do get, you're going to have to kind of wipe it off every now and again. But, you know, you can't go wrong with that. This is the 1.6 millimeter, the standard, the cheapest one, a dollar for like 10. This, they just recently released these, at least in the U.S. These are the Ultra Fine. I don't think they say how small, small they are. But these are incredible. They are so much better than the Crystal, and they are, again very inexpensive and you can write very very fine ultra fine also by Bic but that's a huge difference they are great for cross hatching not quite as smooth as the original but that's okay can't go wrong with these fantastic and then my all-time favorite, and I will sometimes use this in originals, I just won't use it, you know, the, the piece will not be mainly composed with this. This is the uh, Pentel RSVP. RSVP. I'm sure you would have seen them, Pentel, in plenty of offices. You can buy them in bulk. They are very inexpensive, but they just, they don't get dirty. They have this really crisp point favorite pen. I have so many of them packed away. Always have one of these in my collection. So these are my all-time favorite 
ballpoint pens, and they're relatively affordable, the most expensive, as I said, being the Inkjoy, but they are all pretty much affordable. You can find them at any CVS, Walgreens, and or drugstore, chemist, what have you. The first most important thing you have to learn with drawing with ballpoint pens is pressure. Pressure is absolutely key to getting, you know, your baseline down, your sketch, your thumbnail, it differentiates between what is a thick, solid line and what is a thin, wispy line. This is pretty much the exact same order of importance as drawing with graphite. The only difference between the two, using my tongue, is one can be smudged. I mean, this can be smudged as well, but you don't really want to do that. One can be smudged and worked with in that way. It still becomes workable even after you've laid it down on the paper. And one, not so much. Pressure is incredibly important, especially when you're laying down your sketch, opposed to your finished, little polished sketch. Yes, that's a snowman in November. Don't bother me. A really, really common and easy exercise is something similar to what I did right here. You lay down a line as hard as you can, reduce the pressure each time, and then fill in as hard as you can, second as hard as you can, third as hard as you can, and as light as you possibly can, just like you would with graphite to create that gradient. The next most important thing is going to be wrist and finger movement. You want to, especially when you're laying down your sketch, to be to create very wispy, almost non-existent lines. And a lot of that is not just pressure. You need to combine pressure with wrist and finger movement. So again, I can't just tell you how you're supposed to move. I can give you a general idea. Almost like you're uh, petting a really tiny like pygmy mouse. <laughs> I use a lot of light, airy, motions. And notice how my wrist is going back and forth and back and forth. Same for up and down. Keep your wrist very stationary. And use your thumb to pull the pen and your fingers to guide it. Curves, wrist, thumb, fingers. With the curves, your thumb isn't pulling as much. It's almost your fingers that are doing the work. And then for up and down, your thumb is doing a lot more work and your wrist is staying stationary. For larger, you can move your wrist with the ball of your wrist here, helping to stabilize you so you're not doing that. And in this situation, faster is better. What's nice about polished sketches is when you lay down your sketch, it's okay to not erase it, to leave it there. Again, it's not, there's no really rules to this. It really isn't. But the reason is because when you lay down your darker lines, like this, the eye, even though it can see the sketch, it's going to identify what exactly is part of the piece and what is the sketch. And since I'm not using my regular editing program, I will not be able to speed up what I'm doing here. Doing some cross hatching. That's a huge thing. 
when drawing with pen. Scratch hatching. Hatching in general. So even though you can see the sketch and you can recognize it behind, your mind kind of ignores it. And you can tell what is meant to be. If your sketch is too dark, it may still look aesthetically pleasing to some, but it throws off the eye. That's why in drawing with ballpoint, it is so important to use different pressures to separate the sketch from the actual finished, polished sketch. Now I'm going to draw a woman's face in time lapse because I'm using an iPhone and I can do that. And I'm going to show you exactly how I can create a three-dimensional object with a ballpoint pen using pressure and wrist and finger movement. And there you guys have it, what you can do with a ballpoint pen. The answer is a, a lot. You can do a lot with a ballpoint pen. What I like about drawing in pen as well is it makes you a little bit more sure of your sketches. So as time goes on, you erase a little less because you become so accustomed to not being able to erase. Well, thank you so much for watching, and don't forget to stay out of trouble. See you guys later.